is more of a start sit type of question for championship week. One that a lot of people are going to be asking because this guy is either someone you stashed or someone who's possibly on your waiver wire right now. It's Le'Veon Bell. CH, we saw him go down last week. It was brutal. With a brutal injury. Luckily, it looks like it's not as bad as it seemed at first. I'm thinking, okay, if he had some serious damage in his knee or in his ankle, he could be out for the start of next season. Luckily, it looks like it's just, what, a, a hip and an ankle injury? Yeah, that's, they're saying he could back, come back as soon as pretty the playoffs. Minor. He could be back for the playoffs. But for fantasy football, we're asking ourselves, Le'Veon Bell, is he a viable option to fire up in the championship week? Last season, or last week, excuse me, 15 carries for 62 yards and a touchdown. Also added a reception for 14 yards. 14.6 fantasy points in that game. Is that something we can expect from Le'Veon Bell this week against the Atlanta Falcons and this high-powered Chiefs offense. Any chance you would roll up Lev Bell in your fantasy football championship matchup? I think I'd be willing to flex him. No way. And it, it's so <laughs> gross to say. The thing is, he's not going to be like a typical handcuff that you think of like Tony Pollard last week who stepped into a full-time starting role and went absolutely bananas over 30 fantasy points. Right. That's not going to happen with Le'Veon Bell. Clyde Edwards-Alaire wasn't doing that even when he had the backfield auto himself. That's just not what the Chiefs RB1 is going to do. But what Le'Veon Bell is going to give you is exactly you know all the reasons why we like CEH. High upside for his utilization on the offense. The matchup against Atlanta is the second highest yeah. over-under on the week this week. We just saw what Leonard Fournette, we were talking about this before yeah. we recorded, right? Situation is so important for running backs, more than wide receivers, more than any other position, in my opinion, is you know, running backs are more situationally dependent. And you look at guys like, yeah, Leonard Fournette last week is a perfect example of this. Even looking back further, James Conner last year when Big Ben was th- or two years ago when Big Ben was throwing the ball a ton. It's like right. he's not a, a prolific receiver, but he was in a great situation that led to all of that. I think that's where Lev Bell goes now. So I ha- have him as an RB3. Not a guy that I definitely like. You know, want to take him and, and you know say he's a smash play, start him over everybody that you've been starting that got you to the championship. But you know, if you had Clyde edwards helaire and you need a guy who can just slot back in for the you know double digit fourteen to eighteen fantasy points, I think you can do, you're not going to have any other options at this yeah. point. But Lev Bell, I think, is one of those options. I look at it like this: you know, Lev Bell's going to get ten to fifteen touches in the best offense in the NFL with, with as much touchdown upside as anyone. So. You know, you look at last week, only 32% of snaps, but something you got to remember is CEH went down late in that game. CEH played 45% of snaps in the game he went down. So I'd expect 50 to 60% of snaps minimum for Lev Bell this week against Atlanta. And even in a game where CEH was active for most of the game, I mean, 15 carries for Lev Bell, I expect him to, you know, steamroll Atlanta, and they're probably going to be leading in that game. That could be some carries for Lev Bell trying to milk out that clock. Some receiver work as well. We know Le'Veon Bell's skill set historically in his career, whether or not he's washed now or not. <laughs> he has the ability to catch the ball, get out of the backfield Absolutely. a little bit. So he could give you a baseline. I'm with you. I think if you need to start Le'Veon Bell, he has one last chance to make reparations for all the pain he has caused this season <laughs> if you've held on to him and give you a absolutely blowout performance in your championship. Now I will say I'm not expecting an RB1 type of performance, a top 12 week. I'm expecting, like you said, Solid floor numbers, you know, 10 to 15 points, I think, is in his range of outcomes this week. Let's do some comparisons, see where that value is. Would you take Kenyon Drake against San Francisco or Lev Bell against Atlanta? Ooh, that's tough. Um, Drake Drake got a little banged up last week. He was fine. He played through it. But I think I'd still go Kenyon Drake. Um, Kenyon Drake against San Francisco. He's, you know, he didn't score the touchdown last week, but previous to that he had been on a tear. I think he still has a better chance to fall in the end zone. Here's a, here's a tougher one. Giovanni Bernard, who just had a great game against the Steelers of all matchups. Probably no one in the world started him. If you did, congratulations. You probably got into the championship because he had a great week. But Gio Bernard, he has the Houston Texans. They're horrible against the run. Are you going to go Gio Bernard or Le'Veon Bell against Atlanta? These guys are about even to me. I lean Lev Bell, but where are you going? I'm going with Lev Bell. Fire it up. All right, last one here. Melvin Gordon against... Revenge Melvin, game Melvin against Gordon. the Chargers. This one's easy. Melvin Gordon's getting receiving work. He's getting goal line work. Um, he had a great game last week. Only, what, 11 carries last week? Let me spot check that. But the carries were low. Did get into the end zone twice, which definitely, you know, it increased his week. Yeah, 11 carries, only 54% of snaps. We saw some targets in that game as well. Against the Chargers, I do expect um, some volume in that game, especially in the passing game. And they're going to throw it to Gordon over Lindsay. So I think Gordon gives you a little bit higher of a floor. With more upside, too. Yeah, I'm with you. Melvin Gordon is, has been – you know, we, we, he's like in our start sits every single week because he's just a guy who's always in the bubble. You never know when to start him. But 
you got to take his usage over Le'Veon Bell, and we just haven't seen it. And look, Melvin Gordon doesn't have to compete with Mahomes throwing the ball 50 times a game if they just want to go bananas on the Chiefs side of the ball. We could see that happen. Andy Reid could change the way they're calling plays and just abandon the run completely with CEH out of the picture, and now it's only Le'Veon Bell to carry that whole workload.